Limits, they are wonderful things. Ah, oh, let's give a definition. From the very beginning, it's gonna sound wordy, but when I point at this graph, it's gonna clarify a lot of things. So here goes, the limit is the y value. So the answer to a limit is gonna be a y value for the context of what we're doing in this lesson, okay? Things will change, but for this context, this is the definition. The y value that a function approaches, this is not the te technical mathematical definition, as we approach a specified x value. Okay, what in the world am I talking about? Um, let's look at the graph. If I said, this is going to sound wordy, but what is the limit of this function that's represented by the graph as x approaches negative 5? Okay, I'm going to grab another pen, and I want to approach an x value of negative 5, but I'm going to do this on the graph. Okay, so as I approach negative 5, the y value is, well, 3. All right, so, so here's the notation. You're going to see this. I'm going, to, I'm going to write a few of the answers over here on the side. The limit as x approaches negative 5 for f of x is equal to, I ran out of room, equal to 3. Okay, so that's, that's your first example. As we approach negative 5, the y value is 3. I don't know, you're like, well, the, the y value is 3. Well, let's try a different one. Let's approach the limit as x approaches negative 1 of my function. You always have to have the, the specificity of what you're dealing with. I'm dealing with the f function. It's equal to, it's usually not this sloppy, I'm just cramming it in the margin. As we approach, on our function, this graph, this crazy piecewise function, as we approach a x value of negative 1, the logical y value, the y, y value that we are approaching is this whole. Now, I know the value of the function is up here, but we are approaching a y value of 3. The limit is 3. The limit is not necessarily the value of the function. The limit is what we approach. Okay, one more. If I was to say, I need to know the limit. <laughs> These are the sloppiest examples I've ever written. As x approaches 2 of our function, which is defined by this graph, then I would approach an x value of 2 and see what y value would logically result. So I'm going to approach a y value of 2. I have to do it from the left and the right, though. I'm getting ahead of myself, but I want to show you this one. As we approach a value of 2, x value of 2 from the left, we're here. As we approach an x value of 2 from the right, we're here. And we haven't nailed it down to one specific value. So this one does not exist. The limit does not exist. So there will be some that do not exist. Let's go on. Okay, there are four ways to find a limit. My favorite way in the whole wide world is the easy way. It doesn't always work. That would be direct substitution. It's a beautiful thing. The second way is to do, well, my second favorite thing to do. I, I put these in order of how I like them. <laughs> Algebraic manipulation. Textbooks don't call it that. But that's what I call it. The third one is a graph, and the fourth one is a table. Apparently, I don't like those. I didn't, alph I didn't uh, capitalize them. <laughs> okay, we are going to do basically all four methods on the very first problem. So from the very beginning of this problem, after we do one method, you're going to know the answer. And then you're going to be like, okay, move on. But I want to show you every method on this one problem as much as possible. So the first question I always ask myself is, can I just plug this number straight in? So let me point, because that, that would be direct substitution. Can I take a negative 4 and just substitute it here and here? Yes. Can I substitute a negative 4 in here? No. No, because no. Because I would be dividing by 0 if I did. If I plug the negative 4 right here, that would just, that's just, just don't, right? So I'm going to go to strategy number 2, and I'm going to go with some algebraic manipulation. And uh, let's, let's just do old things that we know how to do. What color shall I use? Pick a color. Purple, that works. 
So what I'm really looking for is the limit as x approaches negative 4. I had to write it again because we have not yet evaluated the limit or substituted the number in. My denominator is nothing special. My numerator factors, though. This is your first lesson in algebraic manipulation using an old strategy that you have seen many times before. I can factor. You can factor. Let's reduce this rational expression. x plus 4 divides out, and I am left with the limit as x approaches negative 4 of something that's uh, smaller. Smaller in terms of just not as massive to look at. But I also have this situation where maybe I can use direct substitution. So here I could not plug a negative 4 in, but now I can't. I could not divide by zero, but I've eliminated the denominator, so now I can. And because I'm about to substitute that negative 4 in here, I don't have to write limit as x approaches at this point. I'm just going to put that. Like, I'm direct substituting, just go for it. I don't need the limit written here. And I have negative 2. So I know the answer now. So here's what just happened. I just showed you algebraic manipulation, which led to direct substitution, but we're going to do the other two as well. So, oops, bumped the camera again. Sorry about that. It's kind of in the way. I was reaching for my calculator. I'm just find a different place for it. So I'm going to graph this one, and I'm going to go ahead and give you like a huge obvious hint. When I graph it, it's really going to just graph the line x plus 2. And I am in the wrong mode. Let's switch to function mode, and here we go. So uh, x squared plus 6x plus 8 divided by x plus 4. And I'm just going to go on a standard window here. And it graphs the line x plus 2. Now, I, I hope you know what I know about this graph and the way the calculator graphs it. Because the resolution is only so good. It's not going to do everything you want it to do. There's a hole in my graph. And the hole in my graph is at negative 4. So when I draw this line, I inherently will know the answer. Let's draw it in red. So here's the line, x plus 2. I see it here. I got it there. I know. And I'm going to draw. Look at my x plus 2. Isn't this nice? Oh, great. You know, slope is 1. Y-intercept is 2. Oh, oh, my goodness. Right there. And the calculator won't show that. So here's the situation. Again, I could not substitute a negative 4 directly in. But with algebraic manipulation, I got that. Or maybe I could just look at the graph and figure it out from there. And there is a logical place that I could, that my pen could land, let me rephrase that, my pens, plural, because I have to approach an x value of negative four, <clears throat> excuse me, from the left and the right. And as I do, the logical y value where these two pens meet up is negative 2. So again, the answer is negative 2. I know at this point you're like, okay, I got it. I hear you. One more. Let's make a table. The only thing, <coughs> excuse me, the only thing I can't plug in is a negative 4. This is a really handy technique, by the way. So what I'm going to do is approach negative 4. I'm going to sneak up on negative 4. <clears throat> Let's continue with purple. Here's a negative 4 that I am not allowed to substitute in. I'm going to make, make it look like a thought bubble, not a thought bubble, but like a speech bubble in a cartoon. And he said negative 4. But he can't talk about negative 4 because we can't touch negative 4 because we can't divide by negative 4. We can't talk about negative 4, but we can, we can talk around it. We can't substitute a negative 4 in, but we can get really close to it. So if I wanted to sneak up on a negative 4 from the right side, I need numbers that are just a little bit bigger than negative 4, just a wee bit bigger. And and obviously, the answer I often get is like negative 3. That's too big. No, no. If, if I plugged in a negative 3, I'd be here, and the answer would be negative 1. No, no. Okay, I want a number that is so close to negative 4, you can smell negative 4. So I'm going to sneak up on it, and I sneak up on it by picking like 3.9, negative 3.9. And then we'll go even closer, and then even closer. Okay, and I, I do need these numbers leading up to it. They don't have to be these exact numbers, but I still need to kind of sneak up on my negative 4 from the right. Let's sneak up on our negative 4 from the left. So negative 4.1. I mean, this is kind of my go-to. Like I'll put 0 0.9, 0 0.99, 0 0.999, 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.001. And we're going to sneak up on this negative 4. 
Okay, so here's what's about to happen. We're going to substitute all these values into the original function and find, look for a logical place where these two values would meet. And I would say, you know what, if I was to continue this pattern, it would be, well, negative two. So a little bit of calculator tricks here. Grab a calculator, type the function in. This one's already typed. Pause the video if you haven't typed yours in, if you're following along on a calculator. And now I need to do a few things that are not very um, well known on a calculator. So we're gonna press the window button. No, we're not, no, we're not, no, we're not, no, we're not. We're gonna go to a uh, table set. It is the window button, but it's second and table set. Notice where I'm pointing, second and table set. And I want to set the independent variable to ask. Here's what that means. In just a minute, I'm gonna go to the table and I'm going to type in whatever I want and it will give me an answer. If I had this on auto, then it would crank out answers for me, three, four, five, six, seven, and it's just giving me answers. I don't want that. I want it to ask what I want for the independent variable, which is X in this case, and then it will tell me the answers. So second in table now, and I'll be able to type whatever I want. What do I want? Well, I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want. I want to type in negative 4.1, negative 4.01, negative 4.001, and we're going to type these as well. We're going to write it down, and then we'll discuss what it means. Well, discuss. <laughs> Can't have much discussion when there's one guy in a video talking to you. There we go. Type them in. You can type them too, or you can watch. It's up to you. I'm going to write those numbers down, and then we'll kind of follow a logical thought progression here. So we have negative 2.1, negative 2.01, negative 2.001, and then this side was negative 1.9, negative 1.99, and negative 1.999. Okay, time for the double pin thing again. As x approaches negative 4, y approaches, okay, as I do this, both ink pens are pointing at numbers that are getting progr progressively, hard to say, progressively closer to a Y value of negative two. There's another speech bubble. Now, again, plugging in a negative four is just not gonna happen. See, I tried it once, I got an error. But I can get so close to a negative four that I can smell the answer, and we did.